go live and then they can hear us both. So, uh, and there's a delay, right? Yes. And they can hear and see you now. They, I don't think they can see me on my Twitch thing. I just see starting soon still. Well, that's because there's a delay. Oh, there's a, that's, ah, I got turned. They can hear the us. They so can see you. Echo. All right. Hello, everybody. What? Show one. Um, uh, we're going to paint How about that. And we're going to try to figure out what we're doing and what we're doing. So, um, Justin's with me. Justin's going to be talking to me and keep me company. So I don't go too far off the rails in the next hour. Um, thank you for everybody joining. I'm tapping on my little iPad screen to the right and it looks like I have, uh, there's 65 people watching. So if there's more than that, that's awesome. Uh, I'm just happy there's not like just two. Um, so that's good news. Um, so how's everybody doing today? Tuesday, we're kind of filling in for, um, Ed's terrain Tuesday show. I think we're going to be doing this show for Tuesdays for now. Uh, maybe when the COVID crisis changes and things get back to normal, we might do some alterations or what have you. But right now, this is the time slot for what we're doing. So uh, we'll be doing little painting tutorials, kind of like, you know, Anne's great show, kind of like Josh's great show. Um, hopefully I won't embarrass Reaper too much by my uh, fumbling and figuring out how to paint stuff. Don't worry, I've got a uh, I've got a kill switch here. You can't do too much damage. <laughs> they can hear you, right? Oh, I know they can. All right, good, good, good. And so we're going to be doing maybe some Bones Five stuff. Actually, a Bones Five piece today. Maybe just some other Reaper things. Um, maybe something else. Who don't know? So we're just we're going to be kind of topic driven. Maybe something that I would kind of want to approach this sort of as a class. Um, but then like if you guys have ideas. So the first idea I'm gonna throw out there and you see that it says Crow's Nest as the show and it's a working title. Um, I need a better title, I guess. I kinda like Crow's Nest, I think it's kinda fun, but um, is you guys are probably able to come up with better names than I can possibly ever think of. So think about it, let's not be too, well, do whatever you wanna do, it doesn't matter. Um, so I do appreciate it. Hello, Anne. Hello, Painting Big, which is Anne. Hello. I'm just caught, just kind of looking at the screen here. Um, Thanks for the sub, Planer. Um, don't forget, Proctor, when you see subs, you got to thank people because they're awesome and they hey, support. Hey, Planer, you're awesome. Thanks for the sub. You're my favorite viewer right now um, for your sub. What We're doing five subs. Each five subs gets a mystery box. Do they everybody know what a mystery box is? You know? Yes, we, we have actually done them in the past. Uh, and a mystery box is like, yeah, how big? Like, is it like this big or is it bigger? Is it a shoe box? Is it a tiny box? What's how what's it's the size a, uh, it's a it's a mystery. Uh, each one is it could be a different size. Correct. I, I'm not going to exclude the fact that someone could get a mystery box with a DDS in it, potentially a DDS. Dragons don't share Maljakar, oh. whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's two different things. Dragon no, I, I, no, correct. I mean, like any of those things. Uh -huh. Yes, uh, planar tier two does count as double, so you're you're good to go there. I've got you documented. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Okay, so oh, what what else are we gonna do with this show, Justin? Um, oh, real quick, actually, yeah. since we're on topic of the show. Yeah. Uh, if people do have suggestions for names or content or whatever they want, you know what? If you want to see Proctor paint in a tutu. Right. No. Um, we're going to make a, no, he'll do it because he'll do yeah. anything for the, for the people. Yeah. Uh, he's very, very willing to give. So right. basically uh, we're going to create a text channel or something on discord. I'll get with planer on it. And yeah. if you guys want to see suggestions for the show, including names, you got, you can, uh, you can suggest stuff in there. All right. Yeah. yeah. Justin, your mic is way, way loud and Michael's is too low. All right. Do me a favor. Um, yeah. You know, will you add do this? Nope, don't do that. Right. Uh, you know where you added me on the source? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, the, the little volume slider there? Yeah, it's all the way to the right. Yeah, yeah, bring it down about 10 decibels. All right, okay. And then my road hard's all the way up. Yeah, we're not going to call it that on stream. <laughs> it's called that because the mic is a road mic. And everybody thinks it's a really cool mic and it looks really cool, but it's just an average old mic. Um, right? 
It's not anything uh, special. Yeah, right old, it, it is average, but it is not old. It's not, it's brand new, but it's it's working for now, which is really all that really matters. Um, you know what? Yeah. I would love to see Proctor dress up like Bob Ross and do a Bob Ross painting, but on a mini. Ah, uh, uh, where's my Bob Ross book? Like this, like that, like that. I could do that. I don't have that kind of hair. Um, yeah, we'll do something like that down the road. But what else are we going to do during the show is, all right, so I'm going to approach this as just me painting. And this is my normal office where I do all my work and actually do my real job from here as well. Um, and kind of, I'll be showing you the techniques of kind of how I've learned them. Um, and so many influences over the years. A lot of people have taught me so many different things. I'm going to honestly try to give credit where credit is due. I mean, Anne's on the channel now. I have learned so much from Anne. She's been a great, valuable resource for me over the years. It's been awesome. Um, but yeah, we don't learn all the stuff in a vacuum. So it's nice to be able to give shout outs when, when I can, when I can remember. Um, but at the same time, I try to take everything that I do and make it mine. Um, or that's the only way that I tend to understand it. So when I'm talking about something or presenting something, it's just really from my uh, viewpoint. I'm uh, of the opinion and pretty strong opinion of there is no one way to do anything. There's multiple ways to do it. And I'm going to show you the way that I figured out that my little brain figured out that I can, this is the way that I can do it. But it's not the be all end all. It's not the other, you know, this is the only way to do it. This is the only color to use for this. There's Reaper has 10 million colors. So um, emphasis on approaches. little. Little brain? Yeah, emphasis on little. As long as we're just talking about my little brain, and that's fine. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, Planer already made the uh, text channel for us. Thank you, Planer. That is awesome. Bam. That's 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 hardcore. That's I wouldn't even know how to do that. Um, I'm on Discord right now, but I am on the D Reaper Discord thing, too, if that gets me any points. Um, but, oh, what else we're going to do? Um, this may even be as early as next week. I want to add a little more liveliness to this. I've been kind of watching some of the Twitch streams from various people painting, and they're all really good in their own way. Um, but for my ADD, sometimes I get a little bored. Um, so that's why I've really encouraged Justin to um, converse with me while the show's going on. I really want him to be part of this. And then um, from time to time, maybe on re regularly, we're going to have special guests. Um, some of my friends within the hobby um, will be calling in via Discord until Justin can figure out how to video somebody in. Um, he seems he says he can't do that, but oh, oh um, I, I can do it. I just can't do it through the means that we have you doing it. Oh, so it's but it's not my fault. Um, not <laughs> per se. <laughs> not per se. Hey, go cool, go. Cool. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm a little um, technology deficient. Um, but we're trying to figure out how this is going on. So we got, I did say, I did make this screen. It's kind of cool. I don't know. I think it looks pretty good for now, at least. It's, again, it's a working th piece as well. So that's kind of the plan of the show. And if you guys ever have questions or whatever, my um, uh, request of Justin is to keep me up to date with the stream so I'm not always just staring at the stream and not getting something done. If I'm missing somebody out there, Nightheart Gaming, Hey Frank, what's up, dude? Um, great D and D show. Did you guys get to watch the D and D thing last Friday? That was so much fun, and I, hopefully we're gonna get to do it. And Frank, um, Minnie's on its way tomorrow. Um, I painted up my little character. I painted up two of them. Um, this is a version of this guy, similarly painted. Will be on the show next time, so it's kind of cool. He is a bones. Not Bones, uh, Dungeon Dweller. I don't remember his official name, but he's my Abram character. So super awesome. That's already in a box and on its way um, to go off. And then, um, but yeah, let's get to doing a little bit of painting. Um, I see if there's anybody else that I see. Is there anybody I'm, I know there's a ton of people I'm missing saying hello. Uh, mini Painting Studio, Josh. Uh, Josh is hey, on. Josh, hey, Josh. How, how are you doing? Thanks for joining. Um, yeah, and I'm, you know, it's what? It's three o'clock here in Colorado. It's four o'clock, five o'clock central and eastern, and two o'clock in the west. It's is it because of the coronavirus COVID crisis crap that um, people are watching, or people have time to watch this all the time? Um, I think it's awesome. So thanks for paying attention. And also, the giveaway is open. 
Uh, giveaway is open. Just one. How many we got? Uh, two or three? Currently, we're at five. Currently, we so. have five subs. So five giveaways, or total five giveaways. No, we are five subs. subs. So there's one being giveaway currently. Ah, uh, okay. So and one mystery box. Do you pick out the mystery box? I see Jamie nope, Crane on there. It's one hundred percent up to uh, Lauren in internet. So. Oh, so that's who they have to pay for. All right. So what we're going to be working on today is and. It, Justin, tell me if you can't hear me, if the mic's weird or something, too. So we got the little document oh, I'm camera. watching you like a hawk. Going, and uh, we see uh, there's a huge delay between my screen and my iPad, right? Do you see? Correct. The, you see it now. There it comes in. Boom. All right. So what we're going to be doing, but they're not hearing my voice until they actually see the mini, right? <laughs> Correct. There, there is a delay on that, too. But if you really want to see a live feed of where you're at, yeah. Look at your look at your OBS on your. Oh on yeah, no, I'm looking longer. at that. I'm not that stupid. Um, I got that part. Anyways. Well, right, so. you know. <laughs> just all covering right. all my bases here, yeah, man. Just cover all your bases. Here is the basilisk from Bones Five. Um, super duper cool sculpt sculpted by Kevin Williams, and here is a basilisk that I did uh, twenty years ago. 15 years ago, whenever it came out. It's a Reaper miniature. I don't even see a date on it. Maybe somebody can look it up. Did you see the great de attention to not cleaning the mold lines that I did? You see that? And the, I mean, this is a dry brush special right here. This is no, this is just total. Let's put some orange on there. Let's put some white on there with some yellow dots and dry brush the crap out of it. Um, but this is a Baskos from a long time ago. And, uh, I had heard comments that if you see the sculpt, um, it's a great sculpt, especially for the time. Um, it's just how things have progressed so much into this and how things, um, I think even with just offering it and going into bones has just really made things just so much more. That's the word I'm looking for. Oh, um, they've given the sculptors the freedom to go crazy and make things um, bigger and more dynamic and have the tail the way the tail goes and have the, the pose of the, like it's a real critter, you know, flexing down. I think that's really cool. But also so, in chat, by the way, if you hadn't yeah, caught it, we yeah. have uh, Julie and Bob and we have uh, Jason. Dude. Oh, that's awesome. Bob and Julie are on and Weeby is on. Um, and yes, to specify, there is absolutely nothing wrong with dry brushing, correct? Brock? No, there's nothing wrong with dry brushing. I dry brush all the time. It's just controlled sideline brushing is what you call it. But no, there's nothing wrong with dry brushing. That's This is a dry brush special. And this is a great, fun, tabletop kind of miniature. It's great. I love it. still love it. I have it in my little case. And I keep a case of things that are current and old just so I can see where I've come from and it was nice to go oh yeah I remember painting a basilisk a long time ago a basilisk a long time ago but anyways so let's go and we're going to do if you guys remember maybe the last toolbox I did it was on um, uh, dot textures with the cape troll and so that's what we're going to try to do today is a little more dot matrix dot texture kind of not dot matrix dot textures and maybe some dashes and stuff and just add a little more uh visual interest to the skin give it a little more reptilian kind of feel so what i tend to do and i have um for the for all the color people out there um i've seen ann do this and i've seen josh do it as well but he always has his set colors um here is, and this is what, when I start painting, I will grab, and you can see the palette on the palette cam, all the various colors I have up there. And so a good basis of those is, um, and there's um, old colors and new colors in here, red liners. If you know anything about me and when I paint, I have liners on my palette at all times. Um, I have ruddy leather, auburn shadow, carrot top, oiled leather, highlight orange, yellow mold. Um, I think... Another good color, and this yellow mold color is one of the new Bones colors. Freaking awesome. I love it a lot. There's a old, famous Vallejo color, um, Yellow Ice, I think it's called. Something Ice Yellow. One of the two. Yellow Ice or Ice Yellow. That's super popular with a lot of the painters. I've talked about it for years and decades and whatever, and how versatile, how it's great for skin, how it's great for highlights, how it's great for so many things. This is that but I think better um, why is it better 
because well not just because it's reaper it's because i really do like vallejo paints and i'm not coming on here to bash anything but i like the reaper paints and, and the mix of them because vallejo to me tends to have a sheen to them um and i like non-sheeny stuff it's just easier to blend and easier to for my for my process and everything so that's my that's my um promotion there of reaper reaper paints for right now so we're going to do a little um, dot text here, and you can see on here a little bit, and let me get on the right spot. You can see here I've done a little work on his face, and a lot of times I get this um, question a lot, especially with animals. With humans, you have the whites of their eye, right, and then they have the little iris in the middle. Um, I tend to exaggerate that a little bit more in critters just because it gives it a little more personality because you look at some animals and their eyes are just black. I do this with dogs a lot too. Um, they do have whites of eyes, but they're a lot smaller than humans. Um, and, and, but I like to exaggerate that a little bit. Um, it's a fantasy character. It's my um, interpretation. I can do whatever the hell I want to with it. Um, but I just try to add a little bit more. But you can see he's got some little dots and some little speckles. Hopefully the camera's picking that up fairly well. Um, but we're going to do some work on the legs. So what I'll tend to do is we'll do this. Um, I'll do this leg right here. I've done the top a little bit, and I'm going to darken these up. I will start when I do a lot of this um, dot textures. I like to start dark on the on the figure, and I'm using a, I should be using the wrong brush right now, but. I need like all this kind of gray. And if you can see my palette, I'm mixing in, I started off with my um, red liner here. And I will mix in a, like almost like a gradation of colors as I start bringing other ones in to kind of give me, and this is something in a way um, if you ever take one of Derek Schubert's, Schubert's classes, he does um, uh, shaded base coating, or um, I forget what exactly what he calls his class, but he will, he will base coat not just a flat color, but he'll add um, uh, shades into it, um, a, a darker shade, and and uh, it's it's really interesting. And he doesn't do his palette this way, but the way he applies the paint um, and the way he kind of blocks in his shadows as he's going with the base coat, I think is really interesting. Um, and something that I try to, um, again, something that I'm trying to take, yeah, I like what you're doing. Um, I don't want to do it that way because my brain hurts I'm trying to do it that way. So let me try to do it my own way. Um, so this part here, we're going to work on. So I will take my next kind of color up. And this right now, um, it's a Reaper Windsor Newton. There we go. Series 7. Um, regular one, not the miniature one. So, tell me if I ever get off of um, camera, Justin, please. I got you, buddy. All right, I know you do. So what I'll do... And Don't I'm make gonna... it weird. <laughs> Don't make it weird? How do I make it weird? So what I'm going to try to do is just... I. And this is not even need to be any kind of remotely precise at all i mean just you're really trying to again i'm going to throw a name out here and um sergio calvo um came and taught a class with us and was in the class as well but i really liked when he said create information it really stuck with me it's like ah that makes sense and a lot of this texturing stuff a lot of freehand a lot of just adding interest to the existing sculpt. We've got some sculptors on the watch right now with Bob and Julie and Jason. They do great, phenomenal sculpts, but it's um, <laughs> it's it's fun to try to take what they've done and then you add a little bit more. And I've had a few of them in the past come up to me and it's like, yeah, that's really cool. I didn't even think about what you did to it. Um, that was neat. So it's I, I really like that they um, appreciate it and you're just trying to add fun. down the section meaning actually if you could for me proctor could you move your mic a little more to in front of your face and uh, further down further down is that good is that better 
Yes, primarily because I'm hearing you through Discord and it's voice activated, so yeah. you're it's not catching all your words all the okay. time. Okay. Is are we getting any complaints in that or anything? Mm, no, I don't think so. Not okay. not from their end. It probably sounds a little okay faint to them, maybe. Yeah. Is there? Um, please in in chat if you can't hear, let us know. Um, is there? I'm missing anything in chat as my head is. Actually, uh, Valandar had just said that he cannot hear you at all. So yeah, the closer you can get it to your mouth, the better. All right. Let me do something here. Let me move that, and then that. Is that better? You think that's better at all? This is ah. a good. This is a good show to um, play around with things. Maybe if I do, I need to. God, my mic volume's all the way up on my thing. There, I'm, I raised it a tiny bit more. Is that any better? Yeah, they said it's better. Okay, cool. Cool. And there we go. How did I get louder? You can you can bring me down on the volume some more if you'd like to. Um, I'm the road one, and then you are. What are you? The yeah. one with my name in it. Oh, Justin is a robot. That's what you are. That I dropped you down quite a bit. We'll leave these settings alone after we figure it out. So what we're doing is kind of adding in a way kind of little dot layers. And I've started with a darker color. And if you see my little gradation here, you can see it on the top right. And I'll bring it into the camera so it's a little bit easier to see. I, I, with... I agree with you, Sharky. It's probably more of a discrepancy between people probably using their TVs versus headphones. Yeah. So like TVs, it might be a little harder to hear. Yeah, so there's the gradation right there. Um, so that's what I'm kind of pulling from. And that's why we have the palette a palette cam above um, but it's kind of zoomed out right now we got to figure out a better way to get a, a tripod or something so that cameras lower to the palette um, so what I've started is is some dark colors and I'll come into the left side of that little thing and work in and as we're doing this we're doing our shadows and highlights in a way at the same time um, so where I know there's going to be a little fold in the skin I'm coming in and I'm hitting the dark areas again. Or I want more of a shadow, I'll come back in with the stippling in that area too. Um, and then I'll come in and pop it up a little bit more. And then as it's going to sit like that, right? So your highlight's going to be up here, right? And your shadow's going to be more down here. So as you work, and I have to do this all the time, when I'm working on a miniature, you get into focusing on right here. And so you aren't painting it directly as the light would be hitting it. So it's always a good thing, and everybody says this, but it's good to good just to reiterate it. Keep After you've painted for a little bit, put it side, put it down, put it in the lighting that you would normally want it, how it's going to sit on its base, for instance. And um, if you can look at the big camera, I like to put my stuff at arm's length and see, okay, how is it looking like from here? Not just always up in its grill. Get a total composition of it because you can get so dialed into a certain area that you're working on and uh, just and lose vision, lose in vision, <laughs> as my little French impersonation there. Um, and you lose just the overall vision of what you're trying to do. And the overall composition is probably a better word to use. Um, but let's come up to starting to talk about the highlight and I tend to get a little distracted down I just in, um, in some of the areas so can you can you see this so then it's by just by putting it on the top there we go um, by putting it on the top, you can just pop the highlight a little bit more, even from the, the farther camera angle. And again, these are, this is, everybody's like, I got to use this tiny brush. And I have a um, Series 7 Winsor Newton miniature brush that is oh, so old. It has this, um, here we go, um, tiny, tiny, tiny little um, hairs left. 
this is what I use most of the time is this bigger um, zero. And, and this isn't even really a big brush, but comparatively it's a massive brush, but it's all about, it's all about the tip. A little Archer, Archer reference for you. Um, so I'm going to come in and use my red liner again, add a little water to it. And my um, paper towel, I should have talked about this to begin with, it's just a paper towel. And what I will do is take a little water and notice a lot of people, and I used to do this, and you'll see some residual of me goofing around earlier today, a little bit of paint on your hands. And I've been trying, trying, trying like hell to break me painting. I used to do this. I used to get a little paint. Oh, I just need to do this. And I would get it on my hand and I would do it like that. Josh wears gloves. That's smart. I don't like to wear gloves. So I um, I like the little wet palette, name of the wet palette, but the um, paper towel here being a little wet. Then what, all I'm really doing is I got brush on my paint. I'm just taking a tiny bit off and controlling the tip a little bit. So that's really what this is all about in case anybody was wondering or asking. Hey, Justin. Yes. Um, am I missing anything in chat? Do I need to pay attention to that? You you cut out there, would you say? Do I is how's chat going? Am I missing anything in chat? Learning opportunities are strong right now. Is Sharky and that's very nice to say. Phrasing. Yeah, phrasing. See, there's an Archer fan. Um that is um Al, I can't I'm horrible. I'm worse at names than you are. Um anyways. <laughs> Margaret All. said that they were excited about how that there are four streamers or four painters on stream now, yeah. which means that, you know, we're going to get different styles and approaches Four. Oh, including, um, um, so there's Josh and Ann and me and Sadie. Oh, okay. I was the fourth. Sorry. Sorry, Sadie. I have not been able to, um, watch a lot of the streams live just because of day job and what have you. So if you see, it's kind of cool on the sculpt with Kevin, um, when he sculpted this, there's a muscle up here. There's a next muscle. And this is kind of the little tendon coming on, but there's little folds. So let's sell, um, the dimension there let's add a little contrast to it and so whenever you get a critique from me or from the other judges or whoever you're always going to hear you need more contrast and really what does that mean and we'll talk about contrast i would assume every single episode um, because contrast isn't just um, white paint and dark paint right as i had a little white mixed in there that's yes that is contrast but contrast too is also color. you're above frame buddy uh, contrast is color and light, right? Okay. Ooh, I need to move this back. That's better, right? Okay. So contrast is um, color, it's hue, it's saturation, it's shiny or non-shiny. It's all kinds of things. But and it's light and dark, but not just black and white. So how do we how do we achieve a little bit more of that contrast in the way the folds are going over? And then when we're hitting a dark shadow, how are we? popping it up with some light right behind it. So um, I'm going to take a little bit of the red liner. and Also, I don't know how much laterality you have with that mic, yeah. but see, when you go to lean forward, it's yeah. you're getting out of the range. So it has a one in – imagine like a 180 from the, the, the yeah. front of it. Yeah. And basically anything behind the where the pops filter would be yeah. is it's you completely fall off. All right. So I'm the issue with that is – I am. Yeah, you could probably tilt it down and move it yeah. further back if you can. I had it strapped down. There we go. And then we'll. How about that? Is that any better? Because I the issue was I was getting it in the way of the document cam. Uh, so, well, let's uh, let's keep going and see if it helps yeah, at all. Yeah, let's. Let's, let's try that. I think that's probably be a little bit better. Um, but let's keep losing my progression here. All right, so I'm going to come in. I'm going to start working my 
dark areas a little bit more. And I'm going to overdo it because then I can always come back and fix things. And part of it is, and I struggled with this for a long time too, it needs to be looking perfect the whole way through the process. And um, I'm going to throw out another name now. I took a class with Marika a long time ago, and she explained there's a shit stage in this. Um, there's a crap stage in this. And there's a, for her to say then her miniatures and she's painting there's a crap stage, then the rest of us can feel comfortable that we're in a crap stage and it's not a big deal. Um, is So there's parts of this where you're, you, as long as you feel comfortable that you're progressing and you're moving forward, know that there's little tricks and tips at the end that it will all come together as long as you're patient with it. And one of the things that we do that I do with my you're shade of metallics, I'm off stream. Okay. One of the things that I do with my, um, all kinds of my shaded metallics, my non metal metals, my dot matrix and stuff is at the end, we go to the all fun and ever forgiving glazing. Um, so we'll be doing that as well today. But so this kind of dot texture thing is a, um, can be a very precision based kind of technique. Um, you can also not go as precision and make it bigger. If you want to um, go bigger, you can do that. Save a little time where you're not spending two hours on a leg. And when you have eight of them to do, that can be a little time consuming before you get even get to the rest of the body. But you'll see here on the other leg, I'm going to come back and do some more highlights, but I wanted to demonstrate um, a little bit more of the initial application of the dots. Notice how big they are. We've been working really small. Um, so this is really the first layer of it. And I'm trying to keep some of the dark shadow color. I don't, if I go too far, I can always come back and add some more back in. Um, Actually, Freestyle, he, he made himself a target dot in the beginning. It's, it seems that... Uh... Here's my target dot right there. Right? And it, is it still working? Uh, yeah, you're know. fine. You're fine. So I think, um, I think you haven't had any... See. It's usually when you like stop to adjust something and then you go back, you end up yeah. somehow readjusting somewhere else. All right. Let me do this. Do, 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 do. Look at that. That's better, right? It's the best X. There we go. Yeah. So now I can kind of, but when I have my hand on it, I can't see the X. Um, so another thing too, and a lot of people cover it. I'm just going to cover things as I think about it, whether it's been repeated a million times before or not. Um, how you hold your miniature, how do you um, mount your miniature? You know, some people will just hold the hold the piece while they paint it. Your fingers are in the way and everything, right? So um, there's all kinds of fancy little things you can mount your figures on. These are super cheap uh, thread spool sewing spool things you can get at when they open back up the hobby lobbies and the michaels of the world um a eight pack is a few dollars not very much and then they're stuck on with blue tack um just the blue tack the blue tack that i like is the real is the blue tack loctite blue tack it for me tends to be the strongest there's all kinds out there and i don't have any stock in blue tack <laughs> but um, it's the strongest to me. And this is the way I pretty much do all of my 30 millimeter ish figures. If things get bigger, I'll have a different mounting system where I try to put something on a block, a big wooden block, like, uh, what can I show? This is a non reefer piece. This is a GT studio, uh, orc. And I'll just cut a piece of wood block that I have. Um, so at the end, just super glue it on. And then I'll just take a exacto blade and pop it off when the time comes to make a base for it and everything. Um, so that's good. Just be resourceful. And what you really want to do is just have something that you can hold comfortably in your hand that's not going to tire out or anything. But as you're painting, I will tend to rest my piece right here, have my hand underneath. And then as I'm doing, especially a, a fine stippling, I'm not just out here floating stippling. I'm resting my hand on my fingers, for instance. And to, this seem, may seem super obvious to a lot of folks. Um, I can speak for myself that 
I fumbled. I didn't do this for the longest time until somebody said, why are you making it harder on yourself? Why don't you just rest your hand on your other hand? I'm like, oh, that makes sense. So sometimes things are like, oh, duh, moron. How, how come you couldn't think of that? And other times you just got to kind of be told and reminded. So, And then I'm adding a little more water to my wet palate. Um, wet palate. I soak the crap out of my wet palate. Um, part of that is being in Colorado, it's super dry. And so I like it super wet. Um, a lot of people don't do that. Some people don't even use wet palettes. Here in Colorado, I think it's pretty much a must. I've used wells. I have a well thing. It's super awesome. I love it. But um, if I walk away, which I tend to get distracted or whatever and leave, it, it dries up before I think about, let's put a cover on it. Let's make it all smooth. The wet palettes is good to go. This thing has been through the wars. Um, it's a Masterson spiny, tiny wet palette. Um, there's the ones that are like giant aircraft carriers, um, but oh, they're so big. And then you gotta, you gotta clean it up. And it's, as big as it is, you're just gonna be full of paint all over the place. So I just like the smaller one. It's easier to travel with too. And this is the same one that I just take everywhere with me. Um, so come back to paint a little bit. Is my missing anything? And I had to close my iPad so I could move the um, mic forward. Um, so Justin, do you mind Telling me if there's anything going on that I'm missing in the chat. Building. Yeah, I'm actually reading. Uh, I'm, I'm reading chat as we speak. Uh, also, you're in the bottom left corner of the screen. Assuming I don't. There we go. Perfect. Right. Unless, of course, there's a lag time on Discord, which I don't think there is. Okay. So how many subs um, are we at so far? Let's see. I believe, unless I missed one, we are at eight. So awesome. we are two subs away from a second mystery gift. Oh, cool. So like, I mean, a mystery gift can be what? I mean, is it usually about the same kind of dollar value or is it, could it, could it um, range I think widely? When we originally, when we originally talked to Lauren and we kind of came up with it, it was meant to be, there's some odds and ends of stuff that was either canceled or maybe mm -hmm. even left over from like promotional stuff. Yeah. Um, but then Lauren started kind of throwing extra goodies in there like swag and, and I mean, it's, it, it's likely to have like a mouse pad, a lot of it like cups and that kind of stuff, but she puts minis in there. Sometimes she puts, I think she put a shirt in one of them. Wow. Cool. Um, so it's, it's all over the place. Oh, look at that bug lips gift. And uh, thank you. Bug lips. I appreciate that. I'm bug lips. I'm glad you showed up. I was going to be a little annoyed if you hadn't showed up since you promised on Saturday that he was going to show up. He, uh, Bug Lips joined our, um, we had a streaming painting thing on, um, well, like a, a Google Hangout or a Zoom thing with the Colorado Miniature Painting Alliance, CMPA. And uh, some for some reason, we let a Canadian in. I'm not really sure why. But, uh, whoa! Whoa! Shot across the Those bow. Those Canadians. Oh, Casmania with a five gift bomb. Thank Boom. you, Casmania. Yeah. We're up to three mystery gifts, guys. And I am in negotiations with Ron on a special show-related miniature gift thing. Nothing thing. I'm. Yes. Nothing I'm making any money or anything off of, but it's something where. It's a it's a clever crow sculpt that Reaper has the mold for that um, that I generally give away at shows and stuff. But since we won't be doing any, I hope we do ReaperCon, but let's just not even talk about that right now. Um, yeah, let's let's uh, let's let's just cross our fingers and bury yeah, it. Let's just yeah, let, let's ignore that right now. But um, so I want to try to figure that out. Um, it's just they're always so busy. Um, I just want to get some time to figure out how that happens and we give people the right credit and whatever. Um, I just want to do something a little additional for the show. Um, and actually, too, I don't know if you want to go ahead and tell people about this, but you plan on doing your own individual streaming, correct? Yes. Yes, I hope to. Um, I'll do kind of a Twitch thing. You and I are going to be kind of um, partners, so we just got to find the time to figure out how to do this. I want to cut my teeth, I guess, on this show and feel like I'm providing good value and and real content and not just sitting here painting um so yeah but i'd like to do that i think that'd be kind of fun um i'm not sure yes. what times or anything like that it'd probably be in whenever um i know you're supposed to i was reading some articles on streaming and what have you and the pros and cons of it and what you should do and you need to have a consistent time 
The problem is with my day gig, once the world comes back to normal-ish, um, my my uh, day job is so all over the place in my schedule that it's, it's hard to keep a set. Like, I'm going to be on Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. or whatever, right? So that's going to be kind of the challenge of it. But I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be kind of fun. I like... I like doing this. Um, it's interesting to me. It's still a little uh, overwhelming and a little more like, I don't want to use the word intimidating because it's not really that, but it's more of like, I'm still trying to figure it out in my head what this really means to me and what I'm doing kind of thing. I like doing, I like teaching and like showing because so many people have spent so long over my painting lifetime showing me how to do stuff. And when I was starting, and you know, even well, I'm gonna I'm gonna date Anne while I'm on this because I know she's on the line. Um, it it was hard sometimes to find uh, or sh people to share information with you. So the people that could share, you're like, God, I want to go grab onto you, and I want to get all this information I can. I know there's a lot of more ap avenues out there for that, um, but somebody, a lot of people gave me a lot of information, and I want to try to relay it as much as I can back if that makes sense. Does that make sense? This is kind of rambling. I'm not quite sure. Um, so. And we are, uh, we're three subs away from, uh, from our fourth mystery gift. Holy crap. Cool. Now, how many, um, since I can't see how many, Hey people... Ron, you, uh, you can't say stuff like that, Ron. If you, uh, this is your first warning. Uh, I don't want to have to ban you from the Reaper Twitch channel. Um, who's, who's this Ron? Hawkins? Ron, uh, I believe that's Ron Hawkins, yes. Oh, my God. He's actually paying attention for a change? He's I mean, he's attention's a strong word in this He's case. probably gone now <laughs> with that comment. He's probably out. He did just tell everyone he was going to kill him. <laughs> Let me see. Yeah, you got to – don't worry. Screen cap it. Yeah. Marking the towel is fine, but the towel moves. Um, that was what Jason texted me. So, and I'm going to try to, um, I'm going to try to work on a bunch of different sculpts from a bunch of my sculptor friends and yeah, a hug know. with enthusiasm until we stop breathing. Right. Yeah. What was that? Ron said he, when he says kill, he means hug with enthusiasm. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. It is kind of strange. Um, I thought it was going to be, this is actually working good for you and me talking because when I did the, the, the toolboxes in, at Reaper, right? Um, you were just right there, but I never really looked up at you. You know, I could just hear you talking in my ears or whatever, or just period. So this is basically the same as if I was at, um, at, the, uh, at, the, at Reaper. So, and you're at home too, right? Correct. And your stay at home is still going on, or is that ended yet? Is what? Your stay at home order in Texas. Oh, I believe it's Texas wide until I don't even remember. I haven't checked. There's so uh -huh. many announcements. Uh -huh. But I believe Dallas County, the county next to the one I actually live in, extended theirs till mid May. Yeah. I assume Denton and Tarrant, which are where Reaper and then where I live, will uh -huh. probably follow suit, if I had to guess. Mm hmm. All right. I, what about y'all's? Uh, it's funny. The mayor came out and talked, and ours was through the end of the month, end of April. Um, but they announced yesterday they're going to be laxing a little bit. Elective surgeries are going to start happening, which is super important to my job. Um, I'm in, I work in the medical device field. Um, so them capping, shutting down um, elective surgeries is what stopped my job. <laughs> so luckily I still have one. But um, that kind of put a kibosh on it. So it's good to hear that kind of stuff. Um, hair salons, I think, are going to open up again. We all need haircuts. Um, Michelle, my wife, cut my hair with the dog clippers a couple weekends ago on the deck. She just shaved the sides. Um, so I've been wearing a hat on all conference calls lately. Um, and so, so you've got this really weird, like, uh, like almost like Mo haircut. Is that what you're telling me? Let's or see. not Mo. Uh, no, it's, Curly? It's, it's all down right now, but it's I do have more on top, thicker wise, like um, a like a chili bowl. It's not like a chili bowl, you little 
Um, but it's more like stand uppy. Like I could do a mohawk if I put enough product in it, I think. Right? So Yeah, you know where I haven't been in about ten years? What? To a to a barber. Well you that require it re, it does require a thing called hair in order to go to the barber, right? It does what? You cut out for me because oh, uh, it re, it it requires awful. having hair to go to the barber. Correct, it does. Mm-hmm. I would have to grow well, I grow hair from my head. It's just not even it's not enough to cut. Not just justify. Oh, thank you, Pezzler. That puts us at uh, four total mystery gifts. Awesome, awesome. So, are we gonna know, or do they? Nobody even knows. We'll never know what mystery gift that other person got, right? So uh, no, and not unless they post it on social media, which we do encourage people to do, because in okay. theory, the the gifts should be different person to person. Yeah. Because you've promised that this show will have better mystery gifts than any other show. Is what that's what you told me before we. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, that's. I mean, better that is definitely promised. subjective. Yeah, definitely. you said that this show's mystery gifts, whoever subs for mystery gifts on this particular show, will have the very best mystery gifts out of all the mystery gifts on any channel, any other show, right? You said uh, particularly Anne's yeah. that you were going to have better mystery gifts than you had for Anne's. Is that what you said? Yeah, no, sure. Why not at this point? Why not? <laughs> That's a complete lie and fabrication by me. Um, so is there any questions on this um, kind of rough technique? that we Also, Wicked Elf just gifted five subs, putting us at five gifts. Total. Ah, cool. Hey, did Michael Dutcher make it on from listening to Paint Dry? That's a question. See, watch and see if he made it on. He was he was going to try to come on. I was texting him earlier today about it. If you guys are you may if you follow my little Facebook page, and I'll post up things that happen or do or whatever. I'm, I was asked to do a um, my very first podcast. Um, was it a month or two ago? I don't know, but it was a lot of fun. And it, the show is called "Listening to Paint Dry," um, and it's kind of it's kind of a weird premise to me initially. A podcast on painting, which is you know, podcast verbal people talking, but it was a lot of fun, and it was a good little interview. And I've listened to a number of other ones. So if you guys are looking for a um, a podcast to listen to, um, I know Josh has one, um, but uh, "Listening to Paint Dry." Um, is it is an interesting one it's it's fun and they're the um, they're great dudes they're um, I only really got the chance to talk to Michael because he was uh, around when we were doing the show um, doing the interview I should say um, but I listened to their show and it's really interesting and I'm not one to to uh, do listen to a ton of uh, podcasts what I do typically do is um, when I paint, I'm just painting by myself. I will, um, I do audiobooks. I try to um, keep, and it's kind of fun because it will make me not like right now. I'm thinking about, and when I do classes, I'm thinking about what I'm actually doing, and, and so I can talk about it and demonstrate a little bit more. But and sometimes when you do that, maybe you don't become as free and and, and loose in your painting, and you just let it happen. Um, I like uh, audiobooks first um, because it, they're telling you a story, and your your mind can just go off into that world, and you almost kind of subconsciously paint. I know that's probably not the right way to say it, but um, it just lets you um, be into that world and same kind of thing when I go mountain biking or when I go snowboarding I always have music on um, and I'll be by myself so people aren't around but it helps me kind of get out of the overthinking of the mechanical process which is for paintings the mechanical process but and become more flowy with the process um, and if I can separate myself with the book I, I listen I like music and stuff but I tend to listen to a little more aggressive music um, and I start um, not having as much brush control because I'm getting into the music and I'm moving around. So that's just my two cents there. I listen to all, all different kinds of stuff, mostly um, fantasy genre or sci-fi genre kind of stuff. Um, You're uh, off screen again, by the way. Yep, there we Hello. go. 
Is that better? I, I keep getting off my X that I created. So. so is there any questions or anything in chat? Actually, do you want to talk about real quick the, the expected format of this show? Because I know that a lot of the other shows we have, they're kind of geared towards learning this or learning that, yeah. or they're designed for a specific purpose. I think this will be probably the first, because we talked about this, this will be yeah. probably the first show that we've put out on Reaper that's a painting show that didn't have, although I guess with the exception of Sadie's show, the, the purpose of the show is just to watch you paint and kind of just do your process. It's it's less about learning why you do the things you do. Mm -hmm. People can still ask questions, but it's more about people just watching you paint. Yeah. Um I'm going to, I'm going to inevitably talk about my process and why I'm thinking about what I'm doing and, and showing a specific technique. Like we've been doing a little, the dot texture stuff today, but it's also just kind of, um, being fluid and loose and just, kind of, this is what I want to work on today. And it, you, the next show, you may not even see the basilisk again. It's not going to be a show by show. Let me paint through the whole basilisk and have it done. Anne has that nailed. Um, she does that. She's been doing that with the Dueling Dragons. Josh has been doing that with that other dragon. Um, yes, and Josh is, I was going to say, Josh's show is fantastic for, mm -hmm. I've, you know, I mean, listen, I don't even know where to start. Pick up this kit. You can do it too. Right. Um, you know, it's it's awesome. Get in, right? And then yeah. and if yeah. you're just laying around the house and, and the crow's nest comes on and you got nothing to do, come watch <laughs> Dr. Just kind of screw around. Yeah. And I think too, part of that, it will also be, um, I want to try to bring in, uh, some guests and, ha and have them talking like we're having a conversation. Now we could be talking about painting. We could talk about anything else like, um, you know, what other kind of pop culture stuff. The thing that I um, liked about Reaper Live, I kind of wish they'd get back to it once all everything gets back in order. I loved it when Ron and Ed would banter about all the pop media, pop culture, so that kind of stuff, the movies and whatnot. That was fun. That was a lot of fun. Um, I want to try to see if we can... There's a lot of things out there. And I'm all over the place right now. This is episode one. so But yeah, we're going to try to do some more kind of different things as much as we can within a um, painting show. Um, but I actually have some fun too and, and happy, happy little Trent, um, is one of the little things. Tree, 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 um, happy little trees and whatnot. But yeah, it's about the thing is, um, the thing that's a constant reminder to me is to have fun, you know, don't take yourself so seriously. Don't, not every single freaking piece has to be a masterpiece and, um, well, I mean, it does when you paint to the level I paint, Proctor. That every piece is a masterpiece or a piece? Yes. Oh, it's... Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, whatever. It's it's about having a good time. And that, I think that's what I think runs through all the shows is this is fun. We're painting toys. Um we're painting, you know, when you talk to the sculptors and Bobby, Jason and Jean and Bob and Julie, they're sculpting toys. Um, that's what, and we're painting them. So it should be a lot of fun. And I just want to try to bring that uh, forward as we can. Um, oh, uh, and then also kind of show off um, maybe. So right now I am work, working on this basilisk. Um, I showed a little bit on the beginning of the show. Um, I'm going to do a little, I don't, I don't have any Patreon or anything like that, that, that I will end up pubbing, but I want to pub our D and D thing that we started on Friday. That was freaking fun. And, and I know Frank at Nightheart Gaming is on. And for those of you that joined late, um, we're doing a little D and D campaign right now. It's me and Jean and Bobby and Jason, um, and Ron maybe, and Ed maybe, um, and if we can't, and Ron's definitely going to be on because he has his character already, his Furbog wizard. Um, we did a test session on Friday, so he's going to be on if he's still watching right now. And, uh, but if, if we may have some people pop in or out over, over the times, but I think, what is that like every other Friday? Uh, what are we yes. doing? Uh, yeah. you know, I don't want to hard commit to anything yet, but, uh, okay. we did talk about it, but I think it's going to be every other Friday. Right. Also my shout out, uh, command just messed up. So that's great. Um, um I was trying to do a, hold on. I'm gonna try it again. Yeah. Yeah. So 
So, Nightheart Gaming. Yeah, you did that. Reaper Miniatures just did something. Anyways, this is my player character, Abran. He's a um, an elf ranger. Yeah, I'm pretty typical. I always, I've only played D&D with an elf ranger, and I haven't played D&D too many times. This is a, uh, a Dungeon Dwellers miniature. It's sculpted by Bobby Jackson. This is, I've painted two of them, because I painted one for my own character, and then this thing popped up. And I um, had to paint up a second one to send to Frank. So the next, this, the other one, not this one, but the the next one, the other one, um, is in a box already headed off to Frank, um, hopefully tomorrow. So by the next time we do the show, there's going to be um, the painted miniature. Jason sculpted a, a, a miniature, I think the first time it was unveiled was on the show, um, which is kind of cool. And I'm not, I think Bobby and Gene are going to be doing the same thing as well. Um, and uh, maybe I can get one of them to sculpt up a miniature specifically that's only for the show um, down the road. Or, you know, Jason could do that. Or I think Bob and Julia are on the, on the thing right now. If whoever could beat, come up with the first cool um, elf ranger that we can do. Um, Bobby's already working on something for our dungeon crawl game, but it might not be appropriate to show uh, in a show um, if you get my drift there. So that's this one. And then um, a little, little thing that practicing for this show, I wanted to kind of uh, come out with a little more um, texturing ideas. And um, this is something I kind of goof, goofing around on over the weekend. It's the Brother Hammond, I believe, from Dungeon Dwellers line as well. And it's just the, very, the really beginning stages of doing um, a not dot textures, but more line textures, more like um, worn cloth, worn um, fabric, really super worn, super um, worn out, like he's been traveling the road um, for a long time. So that's kind of where it is. And I wanted to really go with a super duper limited palette um, with grays and browns and a, a little bit of a green as an accent as well. Um, but with that limited palette, um, you are able to say, what is a brown? A brown could be so many different things. A brown has, depending on your brown, and Anne mixes all the colors, um, it could have uh, greens or blues or, or oranges or whatever, And because a brown is a tertiary color, and, and it just incorporates so many different things. So when you want to go limited palette, if you want to you want to uh, challenge yourself with a limited palette yet not restrict yourself too much. It's fun to, it's fun to choose some browns and then you can goof around with them. And even though I say limited palette, um, it has a lot of other things mixed in there as well. Um, so that's kind of the intent of the show is to, hey, I, there's going to be a miniature that I am working on primarily for the show, right? And tonight, today it was the basilisk. But whatever else comes up? Um, or I could see this definitely happening. You know, I'm painting the basilisk, but I get um, a little sidetracked and like, you know, this I'm not feeling it or whatever. And that's a key thing too, is if I'm not feeling it, I'll just grab something else and start painting it and start showing off. And that's something that I do um, in when I'm painting. I will have, and I think a lot of people are like this, I'll have five to six to 10 different things going on at one time. And I'll start one thing going, I really want to finish this one. And if it's got a deadline, then of course you got to try to finish that one, right? But most of the time I don't. Um, so this, what am I feeling? And sometimes if you're not feeling a piece, then let it go. Then no, no movie reference, animate thing. Um, but move on to something else that kind of sparks your interest a little bit more and, and uh, piques your curiosity or like, uh, I feel this a little bit more. I've got a figure, and this is a non-Reaper figure. Um, this is a, a confrontation orc that I've been goofing around with for probably off and on, um, probably off and on, probably about two or three months. I'll just pick them up when I get bored and or like it, getting frustrated that I'm not feeling what I want to do um, with what I'm currently painting and let's go move on to something else. So, um, and there's a bunch of other things and we'll all show those off as the show goes on and everything. But um, is there, uh, I love Brother Hammond's mini, please paint that live. Okay, listening to Paint Drive. I will, um, 
at least part of next week, I will pick Brother Hammond up again and I'll work on his um, his back a little bit more and pop out some more of the details and whatever. And the top of his hood needs some work as well. Um, and a lot of other places too. His feet are awful. Um, not awfully sculpted, awfully painted. Um, so oh, the other goofy thing, um, this is... a Ben Sines, if you guys know who he is, I've never met him before. When I first when I first started painting miniatures, it was in middle school, and that's when D&D was around, and that's when um, Ral Partha and Grenadier was around. And that's when, I, around that time frame-ish, is when I learned the names um, uh, Bob Rodolphe and Julie Guthrie. Um, and then not to know that many, many moons down the road, I would actually become friends with them. But yeah, that's when I would see their sculpts and I got into it. Oh, Left... thank you, Troll Lord, for the raid of 35 people. Oh, awesome. But when I, I quit for a while, high school and everything, and then got back into it, and when the, some of the first Reaper figures I picked up were um, Ben Sign's Lizardmen. And I just really liked his fun poses and his fun sculpting style. So I saw this. Um, and I was ordering some dice for the uh, D&D campaign and saw this, and I ordered it um, through the Reaper store. So he's just kind of fun to play with as well. He's my little, I'm doing, been doing, goofing around with a little more non-metal metal. People know me mostly for doing Shade of Metallics, but um, I've been doing uh, a lot more, a lot more non-metal metal these days than any, I haven't been doing much Shade of Metallics at all. Not that I'm quitting doing it, just trying to, expand a little bit more or refine what I've kind of learned from doing the textures stuff and applying it more to um, uh, non-metal metals and also the uh, Sergio class, Sergio Calvo Rubio class that I took last spring. Um, I'm trying to apply. He does non-metal metals and I was really inspired by what he does. And if you guys are there's all kinds of Patreons, and I'm not going to skip over Ann and Josh's Patreon. Go check those out. I'm, they, they talk about them a lot. Um, uh, there's Aaron Lovejoy has one. There's tons of them out there, but one that I kind of dig, um, and I'll go back and forth. I'll do it for a couple months and then leave and go do something else and then come back in a few months. That's the way I kind of approach them. But uh, Sergio's uh, Patreon is really interesting as well. He shows a lot of different processes, and he's good at explaining and teaching things too if you're looking for, for more of that kind of stuff. But um, we'll continue to work on this probably next week a little bit more. We'll pull up Brother Hammond a little bit more. And uh, maybe something else because I'm hoping that my first guest um, will be next week if we can work all that out. Um, everybody knows who the person is, and I want to keep it kind of a surprise at least up until closer to showtime. Um, it'll be kind of fun. So I think we're a little over an hour. Is that right? Yep. Do we want to um, kind of... Uh, you ready to wrap it up? Yeah. Is there any kind of things... Um, thanks for the raid, by the way. Thanks for all the subs. You're, uh, you're super... cutting out for me. You have to get closer. Uh, thanks for the raid. Thanks for the subs. I'm looking the other way from the camera right now, because I, I got to put my iPad over here since we had to move the microphone. Um, you know, Ron, thanks for actually paying attention to me for a change. I do appreciate it. Thanks for being on, Reaper John and Anne and bug lips and um uh castles and crusaders is great give it a try if you haven't before Raper ron said that um oh uh, what did he say i said something positive about ron so don't repeat it to him if he missed it um but yeah that's probably good for the day i think i uh, just drew our five winners i'm gonna go ahead and announce them in uh, chat here cool is this a good show i want to see yes or no um just yes or no um, if it was a good show, please. All right. We have Listening to Paint Dry. Awesome. Hobby. Good job, Michael. Havely. Yeah. 23 JDs. Awesome. Vacker Roja or Roja. Uh-huh. And last is Sarge Says. So we, uh, I we know got Sarge. 25 subs. I know Sarge. I've seen so I've met Sarge and talked to him at the Reaper Cons many times, and I probably know everybody else too. I just don't know their their things. I haven't got a no yet, which I'm really happy about. That helps my ego quite a bit. So I appreciate you start stroking my ego. But so next week, um, same time, right? You think, Jess? Correct. Right. I mean, unless you want to, because you talked about wanting it to be a little later, right? 
I think this is good. It's already four o'clock. This it's works like, for you, then great. It, it's like six o'clock Eastern time. It's kind of getting late for certain folks. Mm -hmm. I don't want you know they need to eat their dinner and whatnot. So I think let's just let's do it for here yeah. for now. Um, All right, and then perfect. we'll figure out something else. And then maybe maybe down the road ish, we'll figure out a Friday, every other Friday, kind of jump in or whatever. If or if someone can't make something, make their own show. If there's an open slot, up, you know, I'm stuck at home right now. I'm so freaking bored. Um, I, I'm used to traveling for work every week, going somewhere for a couple of days and then flying mm -hmm. home. So this has been the longest I've been at home. And God, I can't remember. Um, so it's, this is a good distraction, totally. So thanks a lot for everybody that um, was part of this. I mean, right now it's I'm just looking and I'm seeing 186 people. That's so awesome. Thank you very much for doing that. Um, thanks for paying attention. I hope you got something out of it and you, you didn't fall asleep. Maybe what percentage do you think people fell asleep? 10, 20, Justin? Um, so, yeah, you're, you're, uh, we have to adjust your Discord live uh, pickup because I missed that entire middle of that sentence. Uh, what do you think? What percentage of the people you think fell asleep? Um, Five or 10? 20? Yeah, that maybe zero. Solid oh. zero. Yeah. Okay, solid zero. Okay, I, I see a hundred percent um on that. So, anyways, but yeah, I hope you all had a good time, and then we'll do this again. We'll do this again next week. Yes. Uh, thank you, John, too, by the way, for announcing in chat. Yes, for the people that won, you do want to email giveaways at reapermini.com. You yeah, you email Justin at reaperminis.com and you give them your name real name and then twitch handle and address yeah it's it's giveaways at reapermini.com at, yeah, at, at reaper justin no nope not that uh, one. Oh, not that one okay all right also thank you troll lord for the sub for three minutes ago appreciate it yeah, um, yeah. with that being said uh we're gonna go ahead and throw it back to who we were hosting when we were uh rating this and okay um thank you guys for for stopping by for our inaugural proctor stream I, uh, that seems. Go back to Maine. I, we got to work on this. All right. Uh, well, I, I mean, I can, yeah, I just need your help. Did you, where, where do you have it right? Every time you switch the scene uh -huh. around, it uh -huh. uh, cuts out audio and stops. Oh, out. it does. <laughs> yeah. So when you're, not on, when you're not on the main screen, they can't hear us. Oh, I didn't know that happened. I just, just yes. I was screwing yes. around there. All right. So. All right. Are we back on the main screen now? Okay. Hash, so I'm living up to the hashtag not professionals then. That was my fact. part of my goal in this. Fact. That's the fact. All right. Later. Do I go to stream ending now? Uh, get, give them a wave and then go to stream ending. Thank you guys for. Uh, Thank for you. I'm clicking on stream ending.